Uh, because he has been out uh, delivering aid, watching aid being delivered to these refugees. We're going to talk to him shortly about that. But first of all, a columnist at The Independent, Mary Jajewski, um, who's fascinating because you may just sort of gauge from her name there would be a, a Russian connection with that. Not only a Russian connection with that, there are Ukrainian relations as well. So, Mary, good morning to you. Good morning to you. How do you feel about all of this? I feel extremely, I mean, I wouldn't say I feel conflicted because I don't. Obviously, you know, you've seen the invasion of Ukraine. Yes. And what's so dreadful is that I've traveled around Ukraine a lot in recent years. And I have visited the places where my late husband's family came from. And he was, he, he, he was two when he arrived in America. Um, and so he was brought up as American. But his parents' background was as citizens of the then Russian Empire yes. in Ukraine. Would they have seen themselves as Russian? They saw themselves as Russian. Mm -hmm. um, but they lived all their lives until they, were, they became refugees in the early 1940s when Germany occupied that part of Ukraine. Yes. Um, they, uh, when, they were, when they were refugees in America... They saw themselves as Russian emigres. They didn't see themselves as Ukrainian. They didn't. Um, they didn't speak Ukrainian. See, this Ukrainian. is so complex. This reminds me of the Irish situation uh, as well. Whether it doesn't matter what people wish or want or like, the reality can often be different. So there are a lot of Ukrainian people who would have seen themselves historically as Russian, and therefore you can see. Uh, perhaps where this conflict arises from. Nothing, horror, nothing justifies it. It adds to the horror because they're kith and kin. This is, this is exactly, this is the tragedy mm. of what's going on at the moment because it's not just that in Ukraine now you've got a huge majority of Ukrainians who see themselves primarily as Ukrainians. Most of them are actually bilingual. Mm. Mm -hmm. um, and if you walk around the streets of Kiev, if you walk around the streets of practically anywhere in Russia, in, in Ukraine, it except for the very far west, mm -hmm. you hear predominantly Russian in the, in, in the streets. Mm -hmm. You hear Ukrainian more in the west, and increasingly you hear Ukrainian because it's become a political issue. Mm. Um, just one other thing I want to ask you, because I find this fascinating. I, like you, um, have had a great chance to see Ukraine and see Russia uh, in the past three, four years. And uh, it, it not, what I want to ask you is this. Do you think the Russian people know what has been done in their name? Well, I think the vast majority of them don't. But, of course, we had this spectacular, um, extraordinary event, which was completely unprecedented to my mind, last night on the main evening television mm -hmm. um, news bulletin on state television in Russia. You had one of the editors who flashed onto the screen behind the newsreader yes, yeah. with a protest placard. Yeah. I've never seen that before. Yeah. I think this is completely without precedent. And what it suggests to me is that it's not just a majority of Russians mm. are believing what they've been uh -huh. told, but there is a generation which actually is now open to Do we know, Isabel, what happens She's in jail, yeah. and she will as be. She, could, yes. she, 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 she was, she was she, arrested. She pre-recorded a video yep. knowingly, knowing that she was going to be arrested after doing that, explaining that she was ashamed yes. to have been involved in, in spreading propaganda. Incredibly brave. She knew exactly what she was doing, but she did it because she wanted to try and mm -hmm. open people's eyes to it.